breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. What the feds just uncovered in Floyd Mayweather's house is terrifying. They going after Floyd Mayweather's bag. Remember the brother that walked around with a $100 million check in his bag, said he ain't even got to cash it? Well, they on his line. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you not subscribe, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And the like button is a must. Cash app is on the screen. Make sure you hit the icon and it says it was created in 2020. Let's get this thing started. I. Uh, unique make audio, man. Check this out. We're going to break this down. Floyd Mayweather, they trying to get the bag from him. Tell me if this don't sound a lot like that's what's going on with Diddy. Black man got the bag. They figure out ways to get it. Let's look at it. They put it on social media. They get public opinion to go against the black man. And next thing you know, the black people tear him down by making these videos. All right? But me, I'm just reporting. And that's it. And that's all. Let's get this thing moving. That money to the IRS. How much yeah. does he owe? It's in the 20 plus million dollar range. It's a lot of money, man. But it's not something that he's been, uh, it's not like deception. No. It's just neglect to, to it's pay. It's neglect. And it's also like, I think, and there is like a truth to this. He makes so much money. There's probably a point when they're like, hey, it's time to pay your taxes. Feds have found terrifying things in Floyd Mayweather's house, creating a huge drama in the boxing world. Floyd Mayweather, a name synonymous with boxing greatness and opulent living, is currently embroiled in a series of legal and financial controversies that are sending shockwaves through both the sports and legal worlds. The undefeated champion, who has built an empire through his prowess in the ring and savvy business ventures. And you go like, all right, here's a check for $25 million. That's an incredible amount of money. And then they go, that's true, but you owe 50 more. And he's just like, that's, that can't be right. How would you feel if you got a check for $20 million, $25 million, and you say, man, that's a lot of money, and them people actually tell you that, ah, uh, but you still owe $50 million. What? Oh, my God, I got to go get punched on in the ring again? Come on, man. I've, you know I've given not you good? $25 million. Yeah. He's bought over 100 luxury cars from the same dealer and always pays in cash. <laughs> he has a hundred luxury cars. I only had 30. You know what I mean? But it cost me 25 years in prison. So when you decide to go out there and buy these luxury cars, the jewels and all that, like I did, that cost me 26 years in prison. Remember, Unique Mecca Audio crashed. And we don't want you to crash. All right. 15 million worth of cars. Congrats. Now faces allegations that threaten to tarnish his legacy and raise serious questions about his financial dealings. This lawsuit is part of a broader pattern of legal troubles for Mayweather, who has been involved in various lawsuits and accusations over the years. These include previous allegations of failing to pay debts and other financial mismanagement issues. The current RICO lawsuit could have severe consequences if it results in a conviction, potentially leading to significant financial penalties and damage to Mayweather's reputation. Adding to the turmoil, there are emerging allegations of money laundering against Mayweather. While details are still coming to light, these accusations suggest that Mayweather may have been involved in illegal financial activities, further complicating his legal battles. Money laundering charges are serious and could lead to both criminal prosecution and severe financial repercussions. You heard that? Criminal prosecution. This is what it's about. Taking your finances and putting you in jail when you get too big for your britches. All right. Compounding Mayweather's legal woes. Recent reports indicate that he was involved in a financial dispute in Dubai. According to sources, Mayweather was temporarily stuck in Dubai due to an unpaid debt. The incident reportedly involved a significant sum of money owed to a local businessman which Mayweather was unable or unwilling to pay promptly. This situation led to tensions and could have escalated into legal action, though it appears Mayweather eventually resolved the matter, 
allowing him to leave Dubai. However, the episode has raised further questions about his financial stability and his ability to manage his extravagant lifestyle. These ongoing legal and financial issues have created a cloud of uncertainty around Mayweather, who has been a towering figure in the boxing world for decades. His influence extends far beyond the ring, with his promotions company, The Money Team, playing a significant role in shaping modern boxing. However, if these allegations lead to convictions or substantial financial penalties... So I found out from a source, Floyd Money Mayweather can't leave Dubai because him and his sidekick, they had stole millions of jury last time they was out in Dubai. So when he tried to leave, it's going to run through the system and they're going to arrest his ass. So that's why Floyd... It could severely impact his business ventures and... Yo, could you believe that? He went and stole millions of dollars worth of jewelry, allegedly, from over in Dubai. What do y'all think about that? I remember hearing about this. What do y'all know about that? Put it in the comment. Let's get with this Floyd Mayweather movement. See what's going on. And his standing within the sports community. The situation has left many in the boxing world and beyond, wondering what the future holds for Mayweather. Will he be able to navigate these legal challenges unscathed? Or will his carefully crafted empire begin to crumble under the weight of these allegations? Only time will tell. But for now, the man who was once untouched in the ring is facing a battle of a very different kind. But this is not it. Had Floyd Mayweather taken the time to reconsider his decision, he might have realized that firing Leonard Ellerby was one of the biggest mistakes of his career. Since their split, Ellerby has been revealing startling details about Floyd and the inner workings of his promotion agency. The See, that's why you got to know who it is that you're having to have your back. Because now, him and homie done split, and now that they split, homie's revealing different financial things that's going on, and he putting them out there. To me, that sounds like uh, a woman scarred. <laughs> you know, a woman scarred. You know, the woman is scarred. She's going to do anything to get at you. Hmm. Prime, the way Diddy scarred Cassie. Cassie's getting her revenge right now for the scarring that Diddy allegedly applied to her. Split largely stemmed from Leonard Ellerbe's close ties with Gervonta Davis, a world champion who has since parted ways with Mayweather Promotions. Adding fuel to the fire was an ongoing feud between Ellerbe and Floyd Mayweather Jr. himself. These tensions were revealed by Floyd's uncle. Like, you don't think Twitter holds a lot of substance, but did you see some of the rumors flying around about Leonard might be leaving Mayweather Promotions? Man, I don't listen to none of that stuff. I'm doing what I do. I'm doing what I do. Is there any truth to any of that? No. That's a, that's a resounding no. <laughs> Jeff Mayweather, a trainer within the Mayweather Promotions team, Leonard Ellerby, has stopped holding back any details. In a recent interview, he openly confirmed all of Jeff Mayweather's claims about Floyd, Mayweather pressuring him to choose sides. However, there's a lot more beneath the surface than what has been revealed. He found himself unable to choose sides, knowing Floyd Mayweather still owed Gervonta Davis $33 million from their time together. According to Leonard Ellerbe, Mayweather remained adamant about not paying the amount, and Ellerbe has served as a crucial mediator between the two, especially in preventing Davis from taking legal action. With See, what this sounds like to me, right? What this sounds like to me is that Mayweather and Javante, they got a dispute, whatever it was. Mayweather got his mind moving like if he's on the street. And he's saying, I'm not giving you nothing, 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 you know? And then here comes LB saying, I got your back. He playing you wrong. And then there goes Devante, allegedly, probably behind the scenes saying, don't worry, I'm going to break you off. When I get this bag, you just ride with me. And that's all that is. And that's where we at right now. I... Without Ellerbe's intervention, the situation between Mayweather and Davis would likely have spiraled into further chaos. Gervonta Davis intended to file a lawsuit right after his victory over Frank Martin, a move that unexpectedly triggered Floyd Mayweather to fire Leonard Ellerbe. This action seemed to validate Ellerbe's previous statements. Now, Mayweather is facing another legal battle as allegations of fraud and theft have surfaced against him. What I'm doing right now is what I do every day. Shut Light. Couple bucks. Great, great, come with me. I didn't get these. 
did it? Yeah. I did? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it, folks. We make the best of it. The American boxer and rapper Tiga have been named in a lawsuit filed by Miami jeweler Leonard Solomonoff, who claims unpaid debts for several pieces of jewelry, with the transactions dating back to late June 2021. Leonard Sewell, the owner of Lenzo & Co., initiated a lawsuit in Miami Federal Court on August 23rd, citing violations under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. You see that? There it is again. That RICO, Racketeer Influenced Corrupt Organization Act. That's what they're going to use to take down all of our black millionaires. Diddy was a prime target because he became a billionaire. That RICO was no joke. Watch when they drop this new Diddy indictment, how many powerful names you're going to see on it and how many powerful names you're going to see become rat bastards. I had to kick that twice. All right, so let's go, man. The lawsuit lists charges of fraud, civil conspiracy, breach of contract, civil theft, and other related offenses. According to Sule, he sold several luxury items, including an Audemars Piguet watch, two Richard Mill watches, a Patek Philippe watch, and a rose gold Rolex presidential day date. Additionally, the deal included a diamond ring and a necklace. However, Sewell claims he has yet to receive full and fair payment for the transaction. Tiga, whose real name is Michael Raywan Stevenson, Tiger. has also faced allegations for failing to pay for a Rolex, according to a lawsuit mentioned by the Miami New Times. In a separate case, boxing legend Floyd Mayweather, 47, and his company, The Money Team, are accused of engaging in predatory, fraudulent, and unethical practices to obtain jewelry from the plaintiff, Sulemanov. There's reports online that Floyd's a billionaire. You They're, think it's bullshit? I know it is. They're yes. claiming he yes. was doing 100 million a fight, and I'm claiming he and his whole career has made about 100. Without paying the full price, the jeweler claims that while he received two down payments totaling $267,000, Mayweather left the city without settling the remaining balance, despite several attempts and negotiations with his agents. Sulemanov never received the full amount, the outstanding sum. In a recent announcement by the Miami New Times, Floyd Mayweather's latest legal setback has been revealed. Leonard Sanoff is suing Mayweather and his company, The Money Team, accusing them of violating the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. The lawsuit, filed in Miami Federal Court on August 23rd, also alleges fraud, civil conspiracy, breach of contract, unjust enrichment, and civil theft, among others. Yo, you see, when they say that the lawsuit includes fraud, that's them giving, I forgot the terminology they call, that's them giving a wink, wink, you know, wink, wink, behind the scenes to the feds that he's committing a crime of fraud, Look into him for it. We did all the research. You come in, you charge him with fraud, and that'll make our case even stronger so we could get the bag. And at the same time, we turn him over to you so you could rape him on the forfeiture under the RICO charge. So you get the money under the RICO charge forfeiture, and I get the money that's owed to me plus pain and suffering. You see how this thing works? You see that smile fly away with got on his face? It's smile. They're going to take that off, homie. They're going to take that off. And I, I mess with Floyd. Floyd, my man, he's number one flosser. Other claims. Additionally, rapper Tiga, whose real name is Michael Ray Juan Stevenson, is named in the suit for purportedly failing to pay for a Rolex. The lawsuit outlines a pattern of predatory, unfair, and fraudulent practices, alleging that the defendants exploited the plaintiff's reputation and assets to systematically steal and convert the plaintiff's watches and jewelry without providing fair compensation. In late June 2021, during a series of meetings with Floyd Mayweather and TMT representatives at the Fontainebleau in Miami Beach, Solmanoff, the owner of Lenzo & Company, asserts that he sold Mayweather several high-end items. These included a yellow gold Audemars Piguet watch, two Richard Mille watches, a Patek Philippe watch, a rose gold Rolex presidential day date, a diamond ring, and a diamond necklace. According to Solmanov, 
he received only $267,000 in two down payments before Mayweather departed from Miami. Allegedly, Mayweather's team also demanded that Solmanov surrender his phone to ensure confidentiality during the meeting. Solmanov revealed that he had smuggled in another phone to capture footage of the merchandise Mayweather purchased and the stacks of cash used for down payments. This rep Yo, he snuck in a phone to videotape the jewelry that he's stealing. Come on, dog. Revelation came on the heels of Leonard Ellerby's comments about the disappointing financial returns from the exhibition fight between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and John Gotti. Ellerby, the former CEO of Mayweather Promotions, disclosed that Mayweather had significantly overestimated the financial gains from the fight. He also noted that Mayweather had been relying on the exhibition match as a last-ditch effort to alleviate his debt. Did you see the Mayweather-Gotti thing yesterday? So, John Gotti, the mobster, mm. his okay, the, grandson, the, the, the brawl, he was holding. So, Floyd is just piecing him up. You know, I mean, even at 46, he's the greatest of all time. And this kid is really an MMA fighter. He's a tough guy. He caught Floyd a couple times with some little shots. But most of the time, mostly he's just getting boxed up. Boxed up by literally the greatest boxer of all time but he was holding on quite a bit and wouldn't let go and was trying to like hold and clinch and hit which is something you can do in MMA so he's protecting himself from Floyd but he's not letting go and so Kenny Bayless gets tired of him not listening and not letting go and he pushes him off and he says that's it I'm stopping this fight that's it you won't listen to me I am calling this fight so he goes crazy and gets away from Kenny Bayless and just starts wailing punches at Floyd look at this Floyd catches him with a counter right there Bang. it became a however you see that was the that was the New York Brooklyn in him right from his daddy that's that their granddaddy that, that's in the bloodline but you're gonna stop the fight how are you gonna stop the fight man I'm trying to I'm trying to put my work in and he just kept working and bringing it to him you know like nah you ain't gonna stop if you're gonna stop it i'm gonna just get mine off this way then being that you're gonna take it from me like that ellerby pointed out that mayweather could only expect to earn between 20 dollars and 25 million dollars from the event which was still several million dollars short of the amount he owed if floyd doesn't repay his debts after such a long delay things could turn quite sour ellerby's claims often seem baffling especially since Floyd Mayweather continues to lead his opulent and extravagant life without a hitch. Many fans have turned against Ellerby, accusing him of treachery for leaking confidential information about Mayweather. Do you think that Ellerby committed treachery, treason, or just plain old rat? You think this solidified him being a rat bastard? Put it in the comments. Let's see what's going on with this right here. All right. After his departure from Mayweather Promotions, Ellerby's insider knowledge about Floyd. Mayweather's situation can be traced back to his role as CEO of Mayweather's Boxing Promotions Company. According to Ellerby, he was aware of Mayweather's status even before Gervonta Davis was informed. While Floyd Mayweather has recently returned to the U.S., he is reportedly still confined in Dubai. Ellerby did not provide additional details about Mayweather's detention, but recent leaks have given boxing fans clues about his ongoing predicament. It seems Ellerby has revealed that Mayweather was given a staggering sum of money at a casino only to lose it all while gambling. Given that Dubai currently lacks legal casinos, it's likely this took place at a private venue. Regarding Mayweather's recent controversies, significantly, it was his former protege who unveiled all of his concealed agendas and even accused him of defrauding people in Mexico. El yeah, so what they saying, right? That Floyd in a illegal private gambling joint over there, they gave, yes, Floyd Mayweather, come on. He done walked around with a hundred million in, the, in his backpack. So they gave him a large sum of money for him to go, you know, gamble. Figure after he lose that, he'll go in his pocket or the knapsack, and pull out some more money and keep it moving. Now, when he does that, when he does that, you know, Floyd said, I'm out of here. I don't have to pay you nothing. This is illegal anyway. But, you know, whoever got the illegal gambling match over there in Dubai, they already connected to the government, so they contacted the government, said he owes when he pay, I'll break you off something. So you detain him, and I'll break you off, even though we was in an illegal gambling joint. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is how it works where everybody gets money, man. You got to grease the palm. LB's proof of Mayweather's financial instability corroborates other rumors circulated by Davis, 
who claimed that the veteran is being held captive. Leonard Ellerby was always tight-lipped about Floyd Mayweather, both in interviews and elsewhere. However, Floyd's lack of transparency eventually caught up with him. Despite the illegality of casinos there, an ex-employee has disclosed that Floyd gambled excessively, running up a considerable debt. He exceeded his budget and kept playing, expecting to cover his losses eventually. But Money Mayweather didn't settle his debts before leaving. Although he might appear to be free of trouble, all right, you know, let me explain that to you. You know how you gambling, you lose, you know. Can we, let me, let's ride. Let's ride. I'm going to take you back to the Zodiac, right, in Harlem, New York, 145th, between uh, Edgecombe and uh, Bradhurst, right? Now, we had a little gambling spot that was down the stairs. They had a big pool table down there, and little Al B comes in from the Bronx. Round of applause and rest in peace to Al B. All right, 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 relax, y'all. Rest in peace. Now, Lil Al B come in. He got the long trench snorkel coat, came from Paragons down on 14th Street. That's where we used to get the ski joint back then, 14th Street and Paragons. So he come in with the long trench coat, and he got the, the raccoon hat on, and he got the gazelles on, and he ain't nothing but about five foot one, you know, and stocky. But he got all the bag. You know, he allegedly was one of them. Kevin Child put in his book, Al B was hitting them off with, you know, the work. Just, you know, we ain't even got to say allegedly because Kevin Child spoke on it. So now, he in a joint, he loses like $60,000, right? He goes in one side of his long trench, he pulls out another stack, he drops another 50 on there and says, stop the bank. He lost that. He went in the other side of his jacket, he lost 50. He said, stop bank, you know what I mean? So now, he tell his man, yo, Go get me another hundred. Ten minutes later, this man walk in with a bag with a hundred thousand dollars, and he drops it on the table and resumes gambling. Mind you, he went and got the hundred to drop on the table. Floyd Mayweather didn't want to get another hundred to pay the debt and drop it on the table. Al B was paying with cash because if you play around with people's money, especially in the hood, anywhere, when you talk about gambling. You're putting your life in danger. Now they're dealing with business, so they got the courts backing them because they break the courts off with a little bit of what they get. But back then, we didn't have the courts to break us off with nothing. So we just had to deal with it on our own, and the strongest man will survive. He's far from it. His only strategy has been to keep these issues out of the spotlight. But he's facing serious trouble if they come to light. The resolution of his Dubai ordeal must have come as a tremendous relief allowing him to refocus on his business ventures and his personal life. He made a comeback in the boxing ring, announcing his return to face John Gotti. He said, I've come to understand that I'm brokering deals on a global scale. Every day, just recently, I was in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. But the situation in America has deteriorated further. In Dubai, Floyd was detained with his private jet guarded by police to prevent any attempt at escape. Meanwhile, in the US, Reports from a former employee indicate that many of his assets are expected to be seized soon. In a recent interview, the former employee shed light on the situation, acknowledging that things have indeed grown more complex. The main issue revolves around Floyd Mayweather's accounts and properties, with aggressive efforts to secure payment. Despite the mounting pressure, Floyd is managing the situation effectively, and there's hope for a resolution. However, the situation is becoming increasingly chaotic. Over the past few months, the rising debts have compelled Floyd to consider selling some of his properties. Floyd Mayweather fought another exhibition against Gotti last Saturday. A real s**t <laughs> the crowd booing in the arena at the end. But in the middle of the second round, Floyd literally had the referee swapped out. He didn't like that the referee told him to stop hitting behind the head. Floyd is used to having the refs do whatever he wants, and he wasn't getting his way this time. It was so embarrassing. Floyd, you're 50 years old. You're a legend in the sport. I've stood up for you in countless interviews, including Shannon Sharp's podcast last week. But you have to stop embarrassing yourself with these exhibitions. I know life is hard. I know life is expensive. But come on, dude, put your legacy first. Nobody wants to remember you like this. And it gets worse, your jeweler filed a lawsuit against you in Miami. And many are saying you're gonna have to sell off your assets. I hate seeing this happen, bro. Earlier this year, Dana White also revealed the truth about Floyd not paying Logan Paul for their fight. With a portfolio valued at over $250 million, 
which includes luxurious mansions. This move has certainly raised eyebrows. Renowned for his opulent lifestyle and shrewd investment strategies, Floyd Mayweather recently revealed his latest venture into diversified real estate. Among his assets, nine skyscrapers stand out, with one Vanderbilt, a 93-story marvel, serving as the crown jewel of his collection. How Yo, did you just hear this? This young man gets a round of applause. He owns a number of skyscrapers. Even a 92-story skyscraper is what this man acquired, and now they're attempting to take it all from him. Pay attention to this man on the screen, because this could be you or your favorite entertainer, rapper, sports figure. You get the bag. There's ways for them to weaponize the law to take the bag from you. We did the Diddy joint, now we're doing this, and we're showing you how Floyd Mayweather's back is against the wall. Cash App is on the screen. I don't care if it's five, ten dollars, show some love. If not, at least hit the like button and the notification button and sign up and subscribe. Let's get this thing back moving. However, Mayweather's announcement took an intriguing turn. He wasn't merely offloading properties, but was strategically reinvesting in a broader spectrum of real estate. On Instagram, he shared a significant shift in his investment strategy, emphasizing that years of relentless hard work had culminated in securing generational wealth for his family. His post further highlighted his ownership of over two dozen mortgage-free homes spread across the United States. That's over 20 mortgage-free homes spread across the United States. He, another round of applause. Another round of applause. He's doing his thing, man. He's doing his thing. You know what I mean? He's doing his thing. Mayweather's caption revealed his strategic intent. He's contemplating the sale of certain properties to reinvest in a diverse range of real estate assets extending beyond just residential to include various property types. Gervonta Tank Davis was once regarded as Floyd Mayweather's most promising student. Under Mayweather's guidance, Davis quickly rose through the ranks, capturing world titles and earning a reputation as one of the sport's brightest young stars. However, their relationship began to sour as Davis grew increasingly frustrated with Mayweather's management style and the way he was being handled, both professionally and personally. The rift became public knowledge when Davis started voicing his displeasure on social media and in interviews, criticizing Mayweather for what he perceived as manipulative and controlling behavior. Davis accused Mayweather of using him for financial gain rather than nurturing his career in a way that would be beneficial for his long-term success. Yeah, listen. Davis, right? This to Davis. No disrespect, right? When you start getting a bag and you got people that's managing you around you, they're all going to use you fun for financial gain. You're using them for your financial gain and you also want them to set it up for longevity. But some people go for short financial gain and some people go for long financial gain. If it's something that Mayweather is doing that you feel is not helping you with your long-term gain, by all means, get out that contract and find someone else, which is what he tried to do, and that's what brought all of this. And, you know, let's just keep this moving, man, just so y'all understand. I want to give y'all too much, because you know how they say too much water drown the plant and too much sunlight can burn the plant. I don't want to drown you. I don't want to burn you. I just want to enlighten you. So sit back and let's get this wisdom. This tension reached a breaking point when Davis parted ways with Mayweather Promotions, choosing to manage his own career and distancing himself from his former mentor. In light of the recent legal troubles and financial allegations surrounding Mayweather, Davis has not shied away from expressing his views. According to insiders, Davis has privately expressed knowledge of some of the financial misdeeds that Mayweather is currently being accused of. Yo, so what they're saying is that Davis know the laws that he vibrate uh, violated, and they're saying that he might became a rat bastard by threatening homie that this is what it is. I don't believe that Javante Davis said that. I think it's just the news people in there saying it. So let's just keep it 100 because Javante Davis... He officially from the hood. He's doing his thing, and I know he's going to handle it dealing with hood morals and principles, and that means not going and going ratting, but time will tell. I don't have him doing it. I'm going to say that for the record, and I don't like giving my opinion, but I got to do that when we talk about a dude like Javante. 
you know, and Floyd was that guy, you know, and, and the two worlds collided, and we used that as a platform for Floyd to go on to become the biggest star in the sport. This one's different because, you know, social media. Including questionable financial practices and possibly even money laundering. While Davis has not provided concrete evidence to back up these claims, his comments have added a layer of credibility to the ongoing investigations into Mayweather's dealings. You see what I'm saying? There's, there, there, there's nothing to back this up, but he's putting it out there. So that just gives, you know, us content on YouTube that that, that gives the government, you know what I mean, a, a, a line or avenue to, you know, investigate and look further into trying to get the bag. <laughs> so that's what that is. Let's keep it moving. Davis's decision to speak out against Mayweather is seen by many as a bold move considering the power and influence Mayweather still wields in the boxing world. That's how they were scared of Diddy, too, when they were saying nobody's going to speak out on Diddy because he's the gatekeeper for the joint, but now the gatekeeper is locked in a cell 23 hours a day. Let's hope that don't happen to the brother Floyd Mayweather, but that's where they're going because I heard them mention RICO charge and fraud and certain things that's criminal that has uh, a mandatory minimum, which would put a man in jail. I... However, it also reflects Davis's determination to carve out his own path free from the shadow of his former mentor. His willingness to expose Mayweather's alleged wrongdoings has resonated with fans and critics alike, who see Davis as someone willing to stand up against the injustices he witnessed during his time with Mayweather promotions. See, what it is, right? So you understand. This young man decided to go out on his own and leave Mayweather after. In Mayweather's mind, because I know how you think when you're from the street, in Mayweather's mind, Mayweather's thinking, I made this trigger. How's he going to leave me and talk about it? he want to go on his own and without me, he wouldn't be where he's at. And now he's talking about our own millions of dollars. Floyd is like, I'm not paying you nothing. Did you hear me? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I'm standing on it. And then his man, you know what I mean, that was a little disgruntled, he ran the other side to make it happen, you know? Davis's allegations have only intensified the scrutiny on Mayweather as the boxing legend faces mounting legal challenges. The accusations from someone as close to him as Davis could potentially be used by investigators to build a more comprehensive case against Mayweather. If these claims are substantiated, it could lead to further legal action and significantly damage Mayweather's reputation and business ventures. Did you hear what they said? It could lead to further legal action, not civil action. Legal action is putting you in jail. Civil is just ripping the bag from out you. But they saying it could lead to legal trouble. So don't be surprised if you see Floyd Mayweather pop up with a new RICO indictment, the same way they're getting Young Thug, the same way they're getting Diddy, the same way... They're going to get majority of these black brothers that made the bag and don't know how to play proper as they say or intend them to do. Moreover, Davis's revelations have opened up discussions within the boxing community about the ethics of how young fighters are managed by more experienced and powerful figures in the sport. Many are now questioning the dynamics of mentor-protege relationships in boxing. All right, so that's what it is, just so you understand. So that's what many is contemplating. I hope y'all like this program. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hit the like button and Cash App is on the screen. Make sure you hit the icon on the Cash App and it says it's created in 2020. Don't care if it's $5, $10, whatever it is. Show some love. Let's upgrade this system and let's keep this thing moving. I'm doing this legal, bringing you this fire content. Round of applause to Unique Mac audience. <laughs> Round of applause, round of applause. All right, all right. So we've been here long enough, man. Cop the book of Rowan Harlem, man. Cop the book of Rowan Harlem. Let me see. Cop the book of Rowan Harlem. I got to show you the book before I tap out. Cop that book. It's at auroranharlem.com, the website, or you could go to Amazon. Got five stars on Amazon. All right, did you hear me? Five stars on Amazon. Let's tap out. I cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime, the crime. Hey. Fresh out the 
Ken of 26 yeah. He back on the strip uh-huh. Getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home uh. He cut from the bottom Back. Came up from the bottom Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it The Instagram page and the YouTube You could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh-huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Like two G's in the night yeah. Drop top beamer so shine yeah. I let shorty go She was wine yeah. Treat her like my past She behind me Spin a couple bands On the dapper dead You be back again Getting green like a Packers fan No cap It's a roaring uptown Baby yeah. horn uptown Dominican bust down Now we on the positive You we got a lot to give Now you trying to stop the kids From being inoperative So take heed Homie Linda Ed He started in uptown He gon' finish dead But now now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community ours. So we can get back to the...